Ladies and gentlemen, damas y caballeros, in my videos, I try to be a critic of our society and how we live our lives because I think that somebody needs to talk about this stuff. Somebody needs to challenge the norm because the norm is ruining a lot of people's lives. But because we're so set in our ways, we're unable to see the extent that it's ruining people's lives. And so I like to point out these weird norms because once you can see them, you can start making positive changes in your life. And when it comes to money, many people can't see the bad choices that they're making that are harming them financially. They can't see that they're actually playing a big role in making them stuck in this bad financial position. And this might get some people upset, but I think that when you really boil down why somebody is in a bad financial position, it is 50% unfortunate circumstances and 50% bad choices. And you can blame it on bad luck, but we play a big role in how our lives play out. And many people get trapped in a bad financial position because they're stuck in this poverty mindset of making bad decision after bad decision after bad decision. But it's not 100% their fault because they're able to see how this mindset, this poverty mindset is keeping them forever broke. And if they understood how this mindset worked, it could help them get out of a bad financial position. So in this video, I wanna explain five different traits of this poverty mindset that many people are trapped in. And when you understand this mindset that so many people have that keep them forever broke, it can help you get out of the mindset and have a better relationship with your finances. So let's begin. <sighs> Trait one, leaving everything to chance. I think that when it comes to money, many people feel powerless. We're never educated on personal finance at school, so many people think that in order to have a good relationship with money, you need to understand complex equations, have elaborate budgets, and be extremely cheap. And because there's this common belief, many people just avoid the subject altogether and just leave it to chance. People get trapped in this poverty mindset where they have money coming in from their job. They spend money throughout the month and hope they will all just work out somehow. And it's crazy how normal this is because money is kind of like the glue that holds everything together. You need it for literally everything. And if you stop having it, then everything else just stops working. When you have this mindset that you just live your financial life by chance and just hope that things will magically work out in the end, you'll never be in a good financial position because you might think that money worked that way, but money don't work that way. Ha! Money don't work that way, ladies and gentlemen. It doesn't even matter how much money you're making. If you live your life by chance, it'll never work out. I mean, 49% of six-figure earners are living paycheck to paycheck. So many people stay forever broke because they don't even try. They get trapped in this poverty mindset of just leaving everything to chance and saying, I'ma let Jesus take the wheel. He's gonna control my financial life and help me. But that'll never work if you do that plan because God helps those who help themselves. You need to get out of this mindset of just leaving everything to chance and actually try and make active changes in your life for the better. And when you do that, you'll actually see See some changes instead of live this stagnated life. And that is the first thing you need to do to get out of this poverty mindset. Trait two, short-term pleasure hits. Money is so fascinating because it's just so psychological. I mean, more so than most people realize. And one common thing I have noticed when people have very little money is that when they get a tiny bit of extra money, they want to spend it right away on something I call short-term pleasure hits. Now let me explain what short-term pleasure hits are because I guarantee you that you know exactly what I'm talking about. Now imagine a low-income household where a working dad finds extra work and makes an extra $200. Now because he's in this poverty mindset where he never has extra money, he decides to use that money to take his wife and kids to a steak dinner that costs around $200. And this is a short-term pleasure hit. 
It's this mindset that people have when they're constantly struggling and never get to enjoy things in life, where when they get this extra money, they feel as if they should spend it right away on a treat because they never get a treat. And some other examples of a short-term pleasure hit are buying a new name brand pair of shoes or hiring someone to clean your house or getting an accessory for your car. And the problem with short-term pleasure hits is that they're short-term. Sure, you might get this experience in the short-term, but in the long-term, you're not making any progress to get out of a bad financial position. These short-term pleasure hits are just forcing you and trapping you to live in this stagnated life where you're valuing the short-term over the long-term. When you get extra money, if you instead decide to use that on long-term things like paying off debt or getting ahead of bills or fixing things in your car, then you can get out of this poverty mindset of constantly feeling behind. You can get out of this mindset of feeling that the only time you can treat yourself is when you make a little bit of extra money from a little bit of extra work. Because when you focus on long-term things, you have less financial burdens and so you can enjoy the short term more. Trait three, not recognizing waste. As I said, I believe that when you really boil down why somebody is in a bad financial position, it is 50% bad circumstances and 50% bad choices. And the reason I say this is because oftentimes, not all the time, but oftentimes when I see somebody in a bad financial situation, I don't see them being extremely careful with their money, but I see them wasting an extreme amount of money on things like going through the drive-thru to get their kids chicken nuggets, buying milk at the convenience store instead of the grocery store, or paying more for bills when there are better deals out there. However, it's not 100% their fault because they're unaware of this concept called wasteful spending, which is spending money in irrational ways on things that don't bring any value in your life. Now, let me show you how those past examples were wasteful. Going through that drive-thru could cost $30 a week or $1,560 a year. Buying that milk at the convenience store compared to the grocery store might cost $3 more a week or $156 a year for that one item alone. Paying $50 a month for T-Mobile instead of $15 a month of Mint Mobile could cost $420 more a year. And it's wasteful spending because spending that extra bit of money isn't making your life better. You're not getting a better product or service, but you're just wasting, you're spending extra for the exact same thing. And for most people, they are completely unaware of this concept of wasteful spending about how these small decisions we make every single day add up to thousands of dollars over the course of the year. I mean, every penny counts. I mean, think about it this way. If you can cut out $100 of wasteful spending each month, that adds up to $1,200 in savings by the end of the year. And I think that for everyone, that's an extremely realistic thing to do. I mean, imagine getting a check for $1,200 each year and how much that will help. If you can get out of this poverty mindset where you're just wasting so much money and just focus on being more intentional with your money, you can live the exact same quality of life for a lot less money. Trait four, never focusing on yourself. Sometimes in life, there's just so much going on and we can get so caught up in focusing on things like the news or family drama or our jobs that we end up sacrificing so much of our own well-being. We focus so much on these other things going on in our lives that we just deprive ourselves of our own mental and physical well-being. And eventually it starts compounding and you can't think through financial decisions. You don't have any order in your life and you can't think straight. You get stuck in this mindset where you deprived yourself for so long that all of a sudden your life just starts tumbling down and past due bills start coming in the mail. You've maxed out your credit card and your wife took everything. 
A little side note, ladies and gentlemen, but a while back, I just kept getting these similar comments over and over and over again of people saying, yeah, your advice works until one day your wife decides to divorce you, takes all the money, takes all the stuff, and leaves you with nothing. You'll see one day, young man, you'll see, as if I was personally attacking them. You know, from this side, it is fascinating because the algorithm will group very specific types of people. I mean, it is just wild, but it was a very interesting experience. But anyways, you have to take care of yourself because if you don't take care of yourself, then your whole life will start crashing down. And I'm not saying you should be selfish, but it's like when you're on the airplane and they say, put on your own mask before assisting others. You can't help others unless you focus on yourself and make sure that all your bases are covered and you're secure. And once you do that, then you're able to help people more because you have less worries in life. Trait five, believing you can't get out of poverty. A few weeks ago, I went to Guatemala just to get out and gain some perspective. And I have traveled to many places around the world. And when you travel, you really see how unfair life is because you see these very basic living arrangements that people have. You see these extremely tough jobs people do, and you see the limited access to basic resources. You see forms of poverty that just don't exist here in the United States and in many other places around the world. And when you see these tough situations, it really just puts things in perspective. You start to understand how unique of a situation it is to live in a place with economic opportunity because it makes you realize that you can always find ways to make money. You can put in the work to move up and you can get out of a bad situation. And I think it's important to constantly be reminding yourself that those options don't exist everywhere because I think that what often happens is that people get in this mindset where they lose all their hope they feel trapped and think that they're sentenced to a life of poverty. But that's not true. You can get out of this poverty mindset simply just by taking active steps to gain control over your finances and seek a better life. It is important to recognize that not everyone has those options. And if you do have those options, if you have opportunities in life, you should seek them to the fullest and use them to your advantage to get out of a bad situation because you can, you're not sentenced to a life of poverty. All it takes is just taking small steps every single day to seek a better life. It's a slow process, but it will ultimately lead to a better life. And with that, muchas gracias. Que tengo un buen día. Video 118. You guys must just think I am crazy. <laughs> 118. No vemos, chico. Whew.